I agree. Anyway, anyway, slight change of mood. Had he lived, Ayrton Senna would have celebrated his 50th birthday earlier this year. Yeah, and you know the weird thing is, is I was talking about this to my 14-year-old uh, son the other day, and he went, oh yeah, Ayrton Senna, was he that racing driver that got killed? God, that makes me feel really old. Well, I know, it's awful, but the, the thing is, I said to him, if you'd seen his funeral, you'd know he was a bit more than that. One of the world's greatest motor racing drivers, Ayrton Senna, has died after a crash at this afternoon. Senna, three times a world champion, suffered massive head injuries. Formel 1 Weltmeister Ayrton Senna. A million people lined the streets of his home city. The Brazilian government accorded full military honours. felt in Brazil that his home country has declared three days of mourning. I think I was nine years old and uh, I was racing that weekend. I just came in from a uh, a heat or a practice session and uh, my dad's working away on the car and I remember him telling me. I remember going around to the back of the car and just bawled my eyes out. And nine years, I remember it like it was yesterday. I remember exactly where it was, what spot. I could take you there right now. In Brazil, they remember Ayrton Senna as a sporting hero who gave away millions to help underprivileged children. Elsewhere in the world, though, we remember him best for this. Can cannot be sounding true, but I start with four years old in go kart. I am just 22 years old, and uh, there is plenty of time to get Formula One if I will get there. And Senna did race in Formula One from 1984 to his death at Imola in 1994. Senna wins at Monaco. And in that time, he won the World Championship three times. The figures suggest that Schumacher and Fangio were better. But the people who know, they tell a different story. I think uh, Senna, I will put him in number one. Uh, for me, Senna is uh, number one. For me, he was number one. I will put uh, Ayrton Senna as number one. For me, Ayrton Senna undoubtedly was the number one. I would put him number one. You know, he was definitely the greatest driver. If you ask me, I put Senna as well in number one. Martin Brundle, who raced against the Brazilian for 11 years, is well qualified to explain why Senna was the ultimate driver's driver. He had a God-given talent that I haven't witnessed anywhere else. Um, a sixth sense of where the grip was before he turned into a corner. If you look at this Lotus here, even when it's going in a straight line, it is dancing. It Absolutely. The, and there. You look at these and you think, here we go. I can't do that. I think Senna's ability to be able to drive completely on the limit. Uh, some of the laps he did, we know, were, uh, were unbelievable. I mean, this, this is just... This is manic. Look, Look at, at this, that. how he reads those two guys. He's absolutely on it, isn't he? This Look is... Look at that. Senna was so good at Banzai last-minute qualifying laps that in his Formula One career, he won an incredible 65 pole positions. He had this gift to just go and find... We could all find a tenth or two. The really great drivers can go and find a half a second or three-quarters of a second. <laughs> However, Senna could do even better than that. In Monaco in 1988, he outqualified his teammate, the great Alain Prost, by a scarcely believable one and a half seconds. to spoil Senna's pole lap. And when you saw the day-glow McLaren and the very bright helmet of Ayrton Senna, he would come through and we literally jumped out of the way. And you didn't want to be the one they all talked about as having blown the lap that the whole of the Grand Prix venue was looking forward to. But it wasn't just out-and-out -out speed that made Senna special. He was, he was so good because he was working so hard 
on details. And I improved the car also there and there, but he went in the fine details. That's why it was fantastic. Yeah, the worst is here. And the here. worst is the second chicane yeah. and in the third chicane. Yeah. But it's because the asphalt goes like this, in the third chicane and it's like this. In the second chicane is becoming bumpy. And if I think back to when I was his test driver at the beginning of the 94 season, uh, after the second day, he had a small incident and tweaked his neck. And that was it. The test was over as far as he was concerned. Uh, I came in the following day and he was there in the morning. And I thought, oh, OK, he must have made a miraculous recovery. But in actual fact, he was just there to listen to what I was saying to the engineers, to work out whether he could trust my feedback. And when I compare that to Nigel Mansell, when I was his test driver, he would set a lap time and then he would bugger off to the golf course. <laughs> Another weapon in Senna's armoury was his utter ruthlessness. Sam Prost having a look and Senna's crowding into the pit wall. Schumacher trying to take Ayrton Senna. Now let's see if the Brazilian moved across. Indeed he did. He often uh, used to put us in a position um, that you were going to have an accident and he would leave it up to you to decide whether to have that accident or not. Martin experienced this psychological warfare, first of all, when racing against Senna in Formula 3. Well, look, I've got a great big lead here, and he launches in from nowhere, and then parks his Rolt on my shoulder. I couldn't get out of the car until they lifted his car off the top of mine. So and when he wanted to overtake, he'd, he'd go on the inside and put the car in a place. If you try to take the corner, you're going to hit him. Yes, he, he would put you in a compromising position and then leave you to make the decision. And if you didn't run into him, um, then psychologically you were buried and finished. He would then know that every time after that he showed you a wheel, you'd jump out of the way. He's got Mansell coming all over him. He has no reason to stay out. I think Even the, the giants from Senna's era time. respected his toughness. I don't think there was any qualifying session or any race he went into that he wasn't prepared to put it on the line. All over the back, he's having a look and he's inside Mansell. He was the toughest driver and the most ferocious driver to um, protect his area or space. And Senna, all his skills involved. He's got a much, much slower car, very clapped out tyres on his car. Mansell's got fresh rubber on, all the grip in the world. Blocking away and sliding a lot, Senna knocking it down. Mansell weaving this way and that way, but Senna won't let him pass. He's got the racing line, he's going to keep it. This will to win reached its peak at the Japanese Grand Prix in 1990. Here, Senna would be world champion, providing his arch rival Alan Prost, now at Ferrari, failed to finish. So, at the first corner, he made sure Prost failed to finish. Taken the advantage. Senna is trying to go through on the inside, and it's happened immediately. This is amazing. Senna goes off at the first corner. Yes, and that makes Ayrton Senna world champion this year. He doesn't even try to break. No, no, no. He, I mean, at that point, when they're back there, Senna, if he wanted to stay in the race, you'd have seen two puffs of blue smoke from his front tyres. Mm. Where he, that gap was always going to disappear. He was driving into a disappearing wedge. After the crash, he showed absolutely no contrition. When there is a gap, you either commit yourself as a professional racing driver that is designed to win races, or you come second, or you come third, or you come fifth. And I'm not designed to come third, fourth, or fifth. I race to win. And if you no longer go for a gap that exists, you're no longer a racing driver. Strangely, Senna had a big heart. He was a devout Christian capable of extraordinary compassion. When fellow racing driver Eric Comas crashed at Spa in 1992, Senna stopped and risked his own life running across the track to help. You see, that's the paradox of Ethan Senna, isn't it? In that he was clearly a fantastic human being. And he, had, he cared about people in Brazil, he cared about racing drivers. I mean, he was mortally hurt when uh, Ratzenberger died, the day before he died. Um, but then he would crash Alain Prost off the racetrack and put both their lives at risk. As a man then, Senna was hard to fathom. But when it rained, it was easy to spot his talents as a driver. And Senna is a wet weather master.
This is Donington in 1993. The track is wet and Senna in an inferior McLaren is in trouble at the start. Is coming up well, Senna is crowded out and is down to fifth position. And Wendlinger is up into third place ahead of Schumacher. Prost leads the kill second. And Ayrton Senna is up to fourth position ahead of Schumacher and challenging Wendlinger as they go round the right hander into the old hairpin. Senna is up to third. It was quite a brilliant couple of corners by Ayrton Senna. Tremendous stuff. He muscled his way back into the contention at Redgate. He's going inside Damon Hill and Senna into second place already. So two retirements already as, and Senna goes through into the lead. He's passed Alain Prost, so... And that was it. One lap, fifth to first. Yeah. If you want to have 40 seconds of what is it and Senna, the racing driver, all about, and there it is in a nutshell. Yeah. After the race, though, he was completely calm. Driving with slicks in damp and really slippery conditions was, was tremendous. Conditions like this is gambling and it's taking chances that, that pays off. And I think we gamble good. And of course, you have to remember that Senna was doing his gambling in cars that were like wild, ferocious animals. This McLaren MP44, in which he won eight races and his first world championship, had very little downforce, a manual gearbox, and 1,200 horsepower, 450 more than the F1 cars of today. It is the last of the turbocharged monsters, one of the greatest racing cars ever made. And today, it's going to rumble again in the hands of Senna's number one fan. There it is. Woo! I can't believe that I'm... Oh, jeez. <laughs> so you've just got back from the Canadian Grand Prix this morning. Yeah, I couldn't sleep. Really? I spent like an hour or so on the flight. I couldn't get to sleep. Because so just... you get to drive Senna's MP4? I just can't, yeah, I just can't imagine what it's going to be like. I just have this, I have this sound in, in, uh, in my head of the car roaring and going through Monaco streets when he's one-handed. I'm just going to go one-handed round and just see what it's like around one of the corners. Let's go, let's go. Can I go? There's, a, there's an incredible scene, I think, with Nelson Piquet overtaking Senna on full opposite lock. I mean, very little in the way of safety, very little in the way of aerodynamic grip. <laughs> Manual gearbox, 1,200 horsepower. Yeah, and the, the cockpit, you could almost punch through it. Yeah. <laughs> so you think, geez, you know, you'd be you're driving around at those speeds, your wheel falls off, the mechanic makes a mistake, you're dead. Um, it's, f it's phenomenal, and I can't even contemplate what it would have been like. But, uh, so that's why I think you have even more respect for the guys that did it back then. I mean, you had to be back in the 80s. Crazy. A bit of honest here. <laughs> you know, you've got your Mansells, PKs, Prost. The it drivers just were, a, just the right were incredible, and you think that shining out from all of those drivers in that great era, yeah. Senna rose to the top. Senna rose to the top. I don't want to go in. Let's do another lap. I love the fact that he, was, he would fight for his own, what he truly believed in. It's just everything. He puts everything into getting that lap, and he had no fear. That's what I loved about it. I love this car. I love it. Come on. <sighs> That's amazing. Oh, it's, it's so much, it's nothing like the car I drive nowadays. But just to, to know the commitment and to, to get used to driving this car and on the, on the limit, I just, I just couldn't imagine it, man. <laughs> 
it's one of the best days of my life. I just feel so blessed, you know. I, I, I dreamed my whole life of driving that car. My whole, my whole life. I just, just ticked off one of the, the, my dreams. You know, I'll be honest with you. I was never a Senna fan. I always thought Gilles Villeneuve was the greatest racing driver of them all. But to make this film, I've watched hours and hours and hours of footage. And the thing is, Villeneuve was spectacular on a number of occasions. Senna, he was spectacular every single time he got in a car. There's an amazing film coming out on uh, Ant and Senna next year. I urge you all to go and see it. It's, it's fantastic. But for now, good night.